Good evening and welcome to the Select Board meeting of May 21st, 2018. And I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Uh, we'll start first with opening remarks, announcement, agenda review. Are there anything in that category of stuff that we need to, to mention at this point? I don't think we do. Um, I certainly don't. Um, we're not taking public comment this evening, so we'll get right into our action and discussion items. Our first item is a, a, a liquor license change in manager for Panda Enterprises doing business as Panda East at 103 North Pleasant Street. So I presume that's why you all are yes, here. Yes, yes. Uh, Christy Bodine, I'm the attorney for the applicant. Um, this is uh, Yi Ching Chen. He's the um, proposed new manager. And really the reason for this change is kind of a nice one. He has been waiting on American citizenship and he finally got it. So uh, you have to be a citizen to, to be a liquor license manager in Massachusetts. So that's why we're filing the change of manager application. For that. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, does the board have any questions? Um, so I guess uh, just say my usual uh, thing, for, but first of all, congratulations too. And uh, you're, you've been the owner for a while, so that you're yeah. familiar with oh, some you. of the history problems that we had several years ago and we really appreciate that um, with your current manager things have changed. I um, was curious just to hear a little bit from you about um, the plans you have for continuing with the management uh, to make sure that all um, state and local laws and expectations are adhered to and uh, um, your own training and uh, how you um, things that you've observed that you think are working well or whatever you can share. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Language and nervousness are an issue here. Um, he's the whole restaurant went through extensive training and as as did he in terms of tips and and, and they changed their um, you know their ID processing. And so forth with after the mm -hmm. incidents mm -hmm. of the yeah, every time we change, uh, check the idea. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been there for what, 30 years actually? So, yeah, yeah. so he's very been involved with the day to day operations all along and, and will be maintaining you know, the existing systems, which seems to be working pretty well. So. Um, you're, you're using um, electronic uh, checking. Yeah, they're using the state-of-the-art ID checking software or hardware that, that scans the IDs and runs a national check-in and all that, yeah. And I um, guess the last question along those lines is if there's anything you can say or any of you can say about um, staff supervision and training. Not his, super, his training, but well, I think he's, he's making sure, and he made sure, because he's really been, he's, he's been the, really the, the main owner all along, so it's been his responsibility all along to implement the changes that happened before and make sure that everybody's kept up to speed um, going forward. They're good. Yeah. That's what we want to hear. I think I'll pursue that a little bit, um, having yeah. sat through the series of incidents. Um, it seemed that at that time, there was kind of word out on the street with some younger people that that was the place to go and try right. your identification. And I'm wondering if there's been uh, a shift that that crowd has maybe gone elsewhere or different in the clientele, or at least an assumption that 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 word has, that, that message has been changed? We well, I think one of the things that they did during the time of the previous suspension mm -hmm. was really sh made sure that they shifted focus more onto the food and less onto the alcohol. They, mm -hmm. They've done a really good job and picked up a really nice margin with their authentic Chinese menu. They have a lot of Asian students and Asian families coming in to mm -hmm. eat off of that menu. And they also took some of the more tempting cocktails off the menu. So the drinks that they have now are, are a little bit more, so not quite as interesting to the... So that youth. has shifted the yeah. clientele? Yeah, and they've been much more, um, you know, much more of an emphasis on, you you, know, you don't come here to drink, you come here to eat. This is a restaurant. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right now, the, uh, the 
if the custom order, the liquor is not, maybe only 5%, 4%, only check for the food right now. We just check, check everything. We order the, the, the machine, right? Check every day. Every, every time we just check the, the, the customer, the, the ID. Excellent. Well, just a, another follow-up. So with the machine, how much, uh, and how many machine. try to, try to, you catch with the machine? How many? I told the every you know every way that I just customer come in, just take the ID to but the machine we order about four hundred sixty. Every year up upgrade about six hundred and fifty dollars. But how year. many how many IDs how many fake IDs do you catch? Oh right now no. I told everybody no more fake ID right now. But do they <laughs> ever go in the machine? Machine does yeah. the machine find any? Machine yeah, machine just go to the inside. Okay, fine, go. That's but how fine. many bad ones come? Do, do, do people still try? How know. many people you try? Know. I do. Right now, but last year, I have a lot. Okay. But this year. Oh, this maybe the word is better. The word is better. Okay, so better. Yeah. Okay. Better. People kept trying. So people, everybody know right now. Right? Yeah. yeah. So if you'd like to make a motion. I yeah, um, the very first one, I think that one is the one. I move to approve the application for a change in manager for liquor license 02866RS0024 Panda Enterprises Incorporated doing business as Panda East 103 North Pleasant Street, Yi Ching Chang Manager. Is there a second? Second. All right. Is there further discussion? Is there an extra 4A in the motion sheet? That I don't think Mr. Steinberg read it, but it says four move. Are you on the revised motion sheet? Oh. Uh, There's one with, with yellow yeah. on it? Yeah, there was just. Yeah, the yellow has to be in there or not? Zero, zero, two, four, four a. 4A. Noted. Is it, it is in. Okay. Sorry, it's just a technicality. I don't see that. Okay. I'm not sure I see it either, but anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, don't, you do see it or don't? Do not. Do you right have the there. yellow? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed, is it 4A supposed to be in there? Yes. Yes, yeah, before the. It's okay. This yeah. goes to <laughs> comma, to there. No, it, there shouldn't be a comma after the number, I don't think. It should be 4A, but maybe Mr. Buckle will work it out for us. Yeah, all right. Well. I just wanted to. Okay, fine. I think we get that sorted out. Anyway, not, not your problem. Not okay. your problem. <laughs> this is the Scribner thing. So, is there further discussion other than the 4A part? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, anything else you want to mention, Mr. Stafford? No, I was just looking at the application very quickly because. Uh, just seeing the number, check the number. Checking the number, but. Uh, I can wait. It's tomorrow. not on the. It's not in the. Uh, I think Correspondence it's from. It's in the top the, left of the application. Oh, yep. Yeah. The, oh, the very first page right here. Right there. Yeah. Uh, the question, and we just ask uh, Mr. Bachman in the uh, printed motion sheet on this, um, where this the second line. I think it carried over from the our 4A agenda. The 4A came is part of is not part yeah, of the motion. It's not. It came so from our was, agenda sheet. So that's. I think we read it. I read it correctly. I think so it is. I'm crossing it out again. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you very much. Too absent. Yep. Thank you very it's much. All gone. Thanks. Yeah. Enjoy time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next on our agenda is uh, short-term borrowing authorization of man. I don't think this requires any action other than we need to sign it, but if you want to um, share with us anything about sure. that real quick. I'm not sure if you want to sign it now or later, but this is a short-term borrowing bond <coughs> notes uh, for $2,625,000 for Amherstwood sewer project, um, water knee drain equipment, uh, purchase of the Kiaris property, portion of the Wildwood School boiler, and a portion of the Fort River Feasibility Study. Um, we received six quotes, and the lowest bid 
which is what we want, is the Greenfield Cooperative Bank, which was 1.79% interest. It's a one-year bond anticipation note. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so at the end, or at we'll some point, for you to sign. Yeah. we'll sign. Okay. So I think, are there any questions from the manager on those, on those borrowings? I think they're fairly straightforward. They're all projects we know about and we've heard about. And so let's carry on to our next item. Um, why don't we skip down, I think, would be best to go to the um, item 4F, which is the authorized regulatory agreement for affordable housing at BC North Square at the Mill District. And Mr. Malloy is here to share with us some... <coughs> Should I move up? Or? I think so, probably so. Microphone picks you up, I think, is probably best. So just because Ms. Brewer came in a little bit sure. late, Thanks. the materials that were right there have yet another version. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> of the uh, of the document, so I think there are some slight changes. If you want to sure, uh, take yeah. us through this whole thing, sure. Thanks, Dave Moy, a planner with the town. Um, you know, just last week we learned that the Department of Housing and Community Development uh, would not allow the town to be part of the um, the regulatory agreement between the state and Beacon. Um, you know, the way this project is being funded is not a local action development; it's a local housing tax credit. So they hold that distinction pretty clear. Um, the acceptable alternative is this local regulatory agreement uh, between the town and BC North Square, and you know, it'll be approved by DHCD. The, the version that was sent on Friday, you know, there's one on Saturday, the changes have been really minor. Um, you know, just clarifying things. Uh, you know, for instance, Beacon is not owner property, they're the developer, so typically we say the owner, so that's been clarified. Um, there's, you know, there was something that came around where one of the investors is named in the agreement and they wanted to be on the notification page so that if they, um, you know, something happened, they're the major investor, they would be notified. But in terms of, you know, how this functions, the mechanics, it, it'll be, um, you know, recorded first at the registry so it's, you know, in lead position so everything's subordinate to it so that way if there's a default, this restriction is in place so it gives the town, you know, the ability to enforce this in perpetuity and that's what we wanted. And it seems like all parties agree to that. So, uh, you know, right now this is something that, you know, Beacon needs to satisfy the comprehensive permit. So we had said that this would be a you know, development that's affordable in perpetuity. The town would be part of a regulatory agreement to enforce that affordability. And with DCD not wanting the town to be part of the low income housing tax credit paperwork, we have a separate agreement. And so this needs to, you know, this is a requirement that they need to satisfy before they can close on the on the financing. And although it's the last minute, you know, they're hoping that the town would, the select board would, you know, would agree to it and then they can hopefully close this week. Okay, thank you. Questions? It's good. One, just, I think I, I understand what you're asking us to do, right. um, but just my question, the last paragraph of the first the last paragraph of your memo to us, the, sure. um, it says um, that the town will be in a lead position at the registry so that all financing and other documents are subject to the restriction, right. and that keeps the affordability in right. place in perpetuity, provides the town the authority to enforce the affordability provisions, and North Square should the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Regulatory Agreement expire or be terminated. But it's not first position in front of the Low Income Housing Tax Credit agreement, that's first position. No, in I terms of financing, I, how I do we get first position in the whole deal? I don't understand. I, that's, I'm told it's ahead of the Home Housing Tax Credit um, Agreement, Affordable Restriction Agreement, so that this is, this will be the primary restriction. Um, because otherwise, you know, the Home Housing Tax Credit is for a term, it's only 31 years, and then after So this the, is in place when that is? Yes. But so it's first position for the regulatory agreement, but for financing as well? Because usually there's like who gets the money first, second, right. third. It, I mean, I've asked it twice and they said it would be in first position. I, I agree. I thought the lending, the financing piece would be, you know, the investors would not be subject to it. Um, you would not want to be, mm -hmm. but I've been told that they would be, so. Um, okay, that's why. Okay, so yeah. you had the question. I had the question. Right. Okay. I mean, you know, the, the idea is that the comprehensive permit, the, um, you know, the 40B permit, the underlying zoning, as long as that doesn't allow the developments in place, that would always. Uh, be in effect, so it would have to be an affordable development. So I don't know if I'd see the zoning changing to uh, allow that development to be something that would be allowed by right. You know, it could happen in the, in the future, but not in the near term. And then this agreement is another layer 
uh, good Italian ability to enforce the provisions. As if the loan was not in tax credit agreement and everything went away, this gives the town the leverage to, you know, to monitor the development and make sure it's affordable. First position is always better than second position. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure, you know, I've been told twice like, now. It's just a fob, but we don't have money in the deal except for the tax incentive. So even if there were a string of sure. loans, first, second, third, it really wouldn't affect us anyway because we're not looking to get money back, right? Right, right. Yeah, we don't, right, you know, right, so we don't have CPA dollars or any local right. funds, so we don't need to try to preserve that globally right. based on the funding. It's just on the type of project it is. So. But it's precisely because of that reason that we don't have an investment, per se, and that, that we, we need a separate regulatory agreement right. than, than the original right. idea, which is to have it concomitant with the uh, DCD. Right, right. So DCD said, you know, this is, you're not part of the financing. We're not, you're not a subsidizing agency. You can't be part of the, you know, mm -hmm. the regulatory agreement. Right. Okay. Other questions for Mr. Mueller? So there are three copies, you know, like, uh, I think last time yeah. we usually have multiple copies. Yes, there were, they're over there. Would you like, are, you, are we ready for a motion? I think unless Ms. Brewer or Mr. Steinberg have a question, I'll answer this. And we'll the, we're under a certain level of urgency okay. for, for Beacon, correct? Right. Is, what, is, what is their deadline, do we know? I thought it was tomorrow. Maybe <laughs> Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> No urgency. So, <laughs> closings were always like that. Yeah. Um, that's that's let me read the motion, and then if the other members have more to say, uh, I move to accept the affordable housing restriction being granted to the town by BC North Square um, LLC, and execute the local. I'm, I'm assuming BC is Beacon Community. Yeah, BC, that's the name of the entity. That's BC the is how they do it. Okay. Execute the local regulatory and use agreement ensuring the perpetual affordability of 26 residential units to be constructed on property located at 92 and 134 Montague Road, Amherst, per the terms of the comprehensive permit issued by the Zoning Board of Appeals under GL General Law Chapter 44B. Is it 40B? MGL 40B. So let me correct that and. Um, do we have a date of when that permit was issued to reference it in the motion? Mm -hmm. I'm say, we don't. February 21st, 2017, but I have to look at the, they have it in the thing, um, well, they say, oh, January 25th, 2018, oh, well, so February 15th, 2017, and it was amended in January 25th, 2018. How about February 15th, 2017, 17 as amended? Yeah because I'd like to reference back to the actual permit yeah. under Mass General Law 40B. That was a typo in the motion. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So is your motion? Mm -hmm. Second. So that date goes before the word under? <laughs> that the date is after Zoning Board of Appeals before the word under, is that correct? Right. <coughs> right. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, Mr. Steinberg just seconded the yes. motion. Yes, thank you. Is there further discussion? Questions, concerns? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? So that's unanimous with one absent. All right, thank you. And you can text whoever. <laughs> if they ask, please let us know tonight. I'm sure they want to know. And so we have copies to, to sign. tonight. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mulway. So next we have, uh, I believe, review, take positions on April 30th, 2018, annual town meeting articles. We, we took a position for free cash. So we're, um, who did we su uh, suggest was going to speak to that? To, to which one? Free cash, the first oh, one tonight. I thought Andy. Was it but you? I don't, you know, honestly, I don't I mean, I know, know that it requires an extensive yeah. <laughs> description, so I, I just couldn't recall. I just don't know. I'm happy to do it if you, or you can do it or whomever. Just um, so we'd have the vote down directly from the... Right, that'll be the, the key thing. Um, and just to confirm, so immediately following 20, whatever it is, 5 or 6, I can't remember now, uh, is 34, correct? 
And so we were going to recommend referral. And then if that fails, we're going to recommend dismissal. Is that, am I recollecting that correctly? Is that for, I'm for 34? That's um, the North Amherst rezoning? That is the, yes. Mr. Kaner's heart. Um, I don't know. Okay. I think that that's what. Uh, you really want a referral? I, that, that we didn't want it at all. You maybe didn't do that. I think we did referral. It's probably because the planning board recommended referral. I have plenty, so. Yeah. Right. Mm. Logistics in order here. My sheet may not be as up to date as it should be. Refer to planning board for 01. Right. That's what the sheet says. Okay. And I think that's the motion that. Uh, there's an issue before 01. That's not accurate. It could be one, one absent, but it can't. It's not an abstention. Oh, right. right. So it must so be right. I have it. I have it. I have it as an absent. Yes, zero, no, one absent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, just, right. And then if that failed, we were recommend dismissal. We're recommending dismissal. And do we have a third position if it's not dismissed that we recommend against? Well, again, I think we implied that with the I'm dismissal one. <laughs> I don't know if we need to take. Yes, Ms. Brewer. I'm sorry, I lost track of which article we're on now. It's still on the same one. 34. 34. It's okay. all 34. There's a series of questions. Exactly. Many, many yep. alternatives. Yes, because originally we said it was not consistent, therefore we recommended referral to the planning board. Um, and then what was our second choice? Dismissal. I believe. I don't have that in my notes from the 23rd, but I think that we I think may we took that up that again later. I think it was later that we went yeah. to that second. The moderator suggested that it might not be right. effective if, it, if referral doesn't pass, then dismissal might not also pass, but. So can we, if dismissal doesn't pass, could we not recommend the article? We we that motion that. that should referral and dismissal not pass. Um, I move that we um, not recommend the article. Second. Is there further discussion? Yes. So just to be clear, referring to the planning board, then dismissal, then not recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there even is a motion to dismiss, we're not. Right. But we are right. not making. No, we're not. The motion we're just, to refer. No. We are not making the motion to dismiss. That's where it right. also gets complicated. Right. We're not we're making not. any of those we're not. motions. We're, we're taking a position on each of those three options as they come up. All right. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll, all those we'll, in favor? We'll Vote. just, um, yes. as we've talked about before, I would encourage the presenter to be uh, quite emphatic about it. Our position on this from our prior discussions. Absolutely. Strong statements. Okay, I'm ready to vote. Any other things? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So that's unanimous with one absent. So four to zero. One absent. Any other logistical related yes. things? To town meeting? Yes. yes. So I had texted Mr. Weiss this afternoon while I was after I texted you to tell you I wasn't feeling well, I texted him to find out if uh, he was still planning to do dismissal for the other 36. article that we, 37, oh, that for the other article that we had said was not consistent with oh. the provisions of that charter, mm -hmm. but then of course, you know, we had to do other things after that happened. So we had recommended dismissal. We were not moving to dismiss. Our script says, that Mr. Weiss on the petitioner's behalf was going to ask that it be dismissed. I asked if that was still true, and as luck would have it, no, it's not. And so, quoting, after consultation, sorry, somehow he keeps wanting to sign me into the network, yes. After consultation with Jim Pistrang, we've decided to make it a non-binding resolution. I said select board didn't know that and therefore hasn't discussed that. Thanks for the update. That makes more sense than referral. And he said just decide it today. So I'm not sure how, since we don't in fact know for certain 
what the motion was going to be because it has gone through several different iterations, possibly subsequent to the printing of our script or the motion sheet that everyone got. Um, I don't know what the exact wording is of this non-binding resolution, but it's a non-binding resolution, which in fact in some ways circles back to the original issue because originally when town council looked at this, Kate Law looked at this back in the early days when it was first submitted, they said it looked like a resolution. It didn't look like a change to a bylaw. Right. So I don't know what words he's going to actually move as a non-binding resolution, but apparently that is going to happen. So I wanted to bring it up as a, do we have a position on that? Um, just for your remark on this, and I am, not about it, a few minutes before you minutes. Not, No, not a lot. Yeah. Uh, would we want to offer a motion to dismiss? Because I, if there's an inclination to do that, given that there's many things we don't know. And we were under the assumption that a motion to dismiss would be offered, and since it will not be, um, I would entertain us doing that if other people wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. well, the other thing, just that I'll mention, I was rereading the memo from KP Law relative to the warrant, and one of the, one of the interesting points they made, particularly about this, is that even if it were a bylaw change, it might not apply because essentially they're grandfathered in by virtue of the way right. state law is written There's around that. So, I'm not sure that changes anyone's opinion. I'm just reminding someone. Right. Yes. yes. So. No, that was actually very much in my mind, and that was what I was going to say, too, because uh, I think for me that's a reason for dismissal because we don't know what the like, impact, the ability of the town to do anything that is going to achieve the results that is wanted regarding this one particular range. And uh, with the lack of development, it would seem that this is one that would be ripe for referral if it was a uh, circumstance where we didn't have um, the change in government coming. Under the terms of the change in government, it seems that it would be best to just let it be dismissed and come up before the council in its normal course of business. Would you be willing to have that be a motion? Ms. Brewer? So it looks, some of this is what we were trying to establish from the time we signed the warrant when we did not yet have any benefit of council recommendations but, but as to what we were putting on the warrant, understood. as opposed to something somebody said in an email today, said the select board should have just kept things off the warrant if they didn't want them on there. Well, that wasn't really a legal thing we could do, so therefore we didn't do it. Um, given where we are now, given that we are trying to get finished tonight, and given that it doesn't matter, it, it truly doesn't matter what happens with this. If it passes and people think they're going to somehow do something with it as a bylaw, it's not going to go anywhere because it does, in fact, conflict with state law. Um, it would apply to new gun ranges, but it won't apply to the current one. And it seems unlikely that we have any in the offing. So I am more than happy to state, perhaps with a little less tension in my voice, on the floor of town meeting that if it was referred to the select board, we wouldn't act on it. So I, before the new council's placed, so I'm just not really sure we need to tie ourselves up in too many knots about this. I think we could just say we vote no on the non-binding resolution if in fact that, if dismissal isn't offered by someone else, right. which it appears is not be, or it could be offered from the floor, that's entirely possible, or we could offer it. But I'm saying rather than what to me feels like we no longer have this nice, clear guideline of we're going to do this, but not this, and this, but not that. That's gotten much muddier as time has gone on, um, as we saw with supplemental dwellings, for example. So I feel less concerned about somehow, we don't like it when people send a message. And so I'm not sure we're sending much of a message by insisting on dismissing it ourselves if the petitioner is not interested in dismissing it. 
It feels like why fight about it? It's not something that to me would be more serious if it was something that was actually going to then negatively impact the town if it passed. And it, it's not going to because it isn't actually a thing. Mm. We would be feeling the need to protect the town's interests by insisting on dismissal. And I think we'll just be seen as fighting for the sake of fighting as opposed to, but I certainly understand the thought behind it given all we've talked about over the past month as to how these things should work. But I guess I'm uncomfortable. I mean, I will say whatever you guys want me to say, but I'm uncomfortable with saying that we should make the motion to dismiss the petitioner more. What's so difficult about this is that we're being asked to react to something we haven't seen. Right, exactly. And uh, therefore it, it catches us unable to come to an obvious conclusion that this is a uh, motion that, uh, for a resolution that would have no binding effect on the town or anybody, or, or including the council to be elected, um, but we don't know that because we haven't seen it. Yes. And that's why we're kind of in this weird position. Maybe, and I, I, I hear and I think I agree about not fighting for the sake of fighting, even though it is tempting sometimes. Um, <laughs> if we were to take no position on a non binding resolution, as we have done on many, and explain in our, your presentation just what you had said, that we didn't know, we don't know what's in the resolution, so we can't really support it or not support it. Our inclination, we had been informed up until today that there would be a mo motion to dismiss. We had supported the motion to dismiss. Absent that, we're not prepared to take a position and let other people fight it out should they want to. If there is a motion to dismiss from the petitioner or from the floor, then we could say our position was to support dismissal. And if not, not to take a position on the not ever seen resolution. I mean, I'm just thinking right. like off the top of my head. Does that make sense? It does make sense because I don't, we didn't get the text. I mean, I, I got a text, right. but we didn't get the text of the resolution no. that says this. Right. We still don't know what so will happen two hours. So I think it's right. all about the statement rather than Right. Trying to get it to be this kind of outcome or that outcome. Are we, the other thing I wanted to ask you about associated with this before I knew that, is if someone decides they would like to refer it to the select board as came up with an article last time we were at town meeting, um, I would like to know if I am authorized to say that if it were referred to the select board that we have neither the bandwidth nor the time to work on this prior to the seating of the town council. And the town, the town moderator will probably say something along the lines of, you know, just referring it to them doesn't mean they have to act right. on it. But I want to make it clear to people that we, I would like the authorization to make it clear to people that we are not going to call a special fall town meeting to deal so, with this issue. So we can't, if, if, they, if town meeting votes to refer something right. to us, whether we, we like it or not, it's referred to us. But I think don't do it to be it. clear that if it's referred, it goes there to die. Mm -hmm. So we'll make a motion about the opposition and because yeah. sometimes we ask referral. Because sometimes we do ask for things to be referred to us so that we could work on it a little more. And rather than bothering it's to ask that it thing. not be, just say, if you do that. Right. Because we think it's outside of the scope of the transition. We need to vote that position. Our previous position was taken not on May 7th, as it says on our chart, but actually on May 2nd, which was we actually heard from the petitioner way back on April 2nd before we really knew what we were going to do with any of these things. But our chart says 5-7. It was actually 5-2 we voted um, to recommend dismissal. Mm -hmm. Not that we ourselves would necessarily have to be mm -hmm. the ones to dismiss it. But do we need to vote so on a position we, about referral or you can just do. say it? We, just, we have consensus, I think, yes. among yeah. us. We knew this already, so we don't really have any information from 
but we want to make sure that there's one other thing. I think that's, I think the, you know, by not taking a position, it's an opposition, right? So <laughs> I don't know that we need to formally vote on that. Okay. So we, we, we trust our presenter to um, present this. I, so, so the motion would be what, that to affirm that we still, as in our May 2nd vote, support any motion from dismissal. anyone on dismissal. Yes, not that we're making it, but that we're we not. support dismissal. And we continue to do so in the absence of additional information. And that if it's not dismissed, if it comes to an actual vote on some content of some motion, that we, we have, have no position. I guess the only that's thing that is that um, that's not a thing, that's not something I'm comfortable with until I read it and we are not adjourning um, this hour meeting until the end of town meeting. And I think we do have an opportunity if it looks like it is a substantive we can thing that we may need to ask the moderator for a few minutes. Yes, yeah, we could do that. So I'm not, while I understand process-wise what you're talking about, I don't understand what they could possibly put in the motion that we would possibly need to say, we recommend you defeat this, which is why, or we enthusiastically support this, which would be the alternates to, we don't take a position. But if we look at the motion for, as, as, as it's to be stated, and we'll try and get it from Mr. Weiss before, uh, if we see something which we think is unlikely, okay. then any of us can ask. Otherwise, we're in the position of just okay. we know what we're right. doing. If a red flag goes up in the, in the language that we see, we have the opportunity to ask for a pause so we can talk about okay. it. Okay, so that's all. I think that, I that's think it. That's, what yeah. okay. that's all we're not, saying. There may not be a red flag. Because, again, we don't know if they're going to change it until two minutes to nine when they walk up. Yeah, we don't know. Unless he says something to us now. Right. Okay. We have a plan? Do we need a, any motion or are we good? I think I don't know that we do unless we Okay. Do we do later? Okay, right, right. Okay, we're we're good. We have an understanding of, we have a course of action. So did we just agree that sort of motion by consensus? Yes. Okay, and I just want to clarify then. We the, by consensus, not a motion. <laughs> well, it was sort of. Do we know? Do we know whose speakers are? It sounds like Ms. Brewer is uh, identified. Yeah, she has that one. On that one, and mm -hmm. I have thirty-four, which will come up after the free cash, and then uh, I have thirty-five, and 35 36. slash thirty-six. Okay. I have the twins, and then I can state the no position on thirty-eight. Um, we do have a consent calendar item, so if we want to take care of that. May I ask one more quick question about the town meeting stuff? So we didn't sure. take a new vote on 37, and on 34, did we take a new vote that we were referring to planning board, or recommend, yeah. yeah. Recommending referral planning board, recommending dismissal, and not recommending. We voted tonight. We voted again tonight yes, right. to, for that three-part action. So I just want to be clear. Rec that. Recommend the planning board, then dismissal, then not recommend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we have to keep doing different things over and over again. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I uh, move to approve the items listed on the consent calendar for the May 21, 2018 agenda as presented. Second. So a motion is second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that's unanimous with one absent. And do we have any items under charter transition that we wanted to discuss this evening? Yes. Mr. Walker. Yes, the hearing on the charter in the uh, joint committee on ballot laws will be on Wednesday, May 30th at 1 p.m. And I guess that the question that needs to be determined, but I don't know that we need to do that in this session, uh, Mr. Slaughter. Uh, 
is the one who is the, the key decider on this <laughs> is uh, who is going and who is speaking on behalf of the select board in the town. And uh, I think we need to uh, uh, let that play out in that fashion right. uh, rather than have it decided now. This group? Well, um, I think it's something we can all talk about. And since we can't do that, unless we're in public session, I have thought about um, how we might want to represent the town. And um, I think certainly Mr. Bachelman, and I think you would say you were available. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking of uh, Mr. Steinberg for a number of reasons. And then I was also thinking about our council, Lauren Goldberg, because of a familiarity. And I know there's been um, discussion with other people who are interested who aren't directly representing the town. I think a small um, focused group for the town, the three, I named is something I'm comfortable with, although I understand it's the chair's uh, decision, ultimately, who represents this board. Um, and perhaps if other people, I mean, it's a known date, and if other people who were interested um, in this wanted to go, they could certainly organize themselves to do so. And but I don't think I think we have to be really clear that who's going representing the town. And I, I think a small focus group is the best strategy. But that's my opinion. I, I talked to the chair a little bit earlier, so I'm comfortable saying my opinion. Ms. Brewer. So uh, along those same lines, um, yeah, I was thinking also about, I, I'm not sure if Mr. Bachman would need to necessarily speak. You know, I think it's one of those things where you okay. sign up and then decide how much you want to do or if you want to divide it up, kind of depending on how it all plays out. Since you sign up when you get there, you want to sign up ahead of time, apparently. And that, and if Mr. Steinberg would speak on our behalf just based on um, his experiences thus far. And then if, do we think we could get KP Law there? I, I have like not asked, but I can. Yeah, it's does, it close. Like that does that make sense to you? Yes, I, I think it makes sense. I like that idea a lot. And then Mr. Bachman as also as reference there, if if mm -hmm. the question, but I would, mm -hmm. um, I would recommend that's the group people I would recommend. And then it's also my understanding that the former chair of the Charter Commission intends to sign up and yeah. speak. And so although I would hope that person would not go first, um, I would hope that the elected current elected official would do that rather than the very recent elected official. Um, would also be there to answer questions associated with that. That would be their choice, but that's not necessarily yeah. our, our team as such. Right. But it is perhaps a little different than just an interested party from the town of Amherst. Well, it's the, kind of an in-between sort of person. Well, they, have, they can claim that, but it's still not representing the town, I don't think. Right. Not in a formal way. Mr. Steinberg, are you available on the phone? I am. <laughs> I have held the date open. Okay, good. After. Well, mm -hmm. love is, to serve. So I think that, I'm, please, if you would, <laughs> represent us. Okay. That'll no, be easiest from. I'll make that part yeah. easier. Two, I have two other things. One is, um, got a note from uh, Ms. K. Moran, who is serving on the Charter uh, Bylaw Review Committee. She has been accepted to a um, uh, housing list that she has been on mm -hmm. and um, will be available in town until August, but wondered if the select board wanted to consider replacing her earlier than later since she won't be here during the key months of September and October. Um, she's willing to serve on to, until then, but that's something for you to mm -hmm. think about. Um, the second meeting of that group is tomorrow. Um, they're still sort of just playing with sort of formats on how they want to do their work. They're not actually doing any work mm -hmm. at this point. But, and they've elected uh, Mr. Bob Ritchie to be to chair the committee. Associated with, I mean, obviously we're hearing this for the first time, but my initial reaction is, thank goodness she's willing to stay yeah, on to the it. initial stages yeah. of it. That's so, terrific. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Rather than saying, nope, got to pack right now. Bye-bye. Because -bye. <laughs> um, we're, we're actually in some ways hoping against her wishes that she wouldn't get in. Oh, no, we always want for her place to get in, for her place, well -being. For place that she was going. But I think one of the things that may arise out of these meetings is that we may see interested parties show up at the meetings who might make a good member. And so mm -hmm. I think that we want to make sure we don't lose track of it mm -hmm. because we don't want to say, oh, oops, Kay's gone tomorrow and mm -hmm. now we only have two members. But um, 
I think it would be better to wait a little bit, and, but maybe did we want to put something out that asked for another person? It, was, it might be nice to have an overlay, you know, uh, overlap. So along those, I was wondering if we wanted to recruit a person, sort of, who might be interested in attending some of the meetings, maybe yeah. they have summer conflicts, who could sit in and then be familiar and be ready to step in to the, because I think we, the charge is three people, so there could be somebody who attended yeah. or started to attend when they were, and then um, with the idea that they would potentially be the, the next member when she left. So it gives us time to plan for that, that overlap. So I'm just wondering how we might appropriately, effectively in that crew. I think we That's need to do some brainstorming. Okay. And did you have something else? The only thing I would, other thing I'd say, now that we know with the chair who's, who's been selected, might want to consult Mr. Ritchie about this mm -hmm. too. A different topic. It's just sad news to report that you've already alerted to that Mr. Ron Bahanowitz passed away last week. Uh, he was the facilities manager for the town for many years and uh, had a brain tumor and passed away from that. And so his wake is tomorrow and his funeral service is at actually, although he lived in Deerfield, he had a close connection to St. Bridges, so his funeral mass is tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. Uh, St. Bridges. Do you, I think you sent it to us, but I forget the times for the wake. Four to seven for the wake tomorrow in Deerfield, and then the, the mass is at 10 o'clock on, on Wednesday. Right. True Saturdays. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Any other notes yeah. at that point? All right. So I think we'll go into recess for the evening, unless there's something else. We can make a couple quick announcements. Sure. So on May 29th, the Governor's Commission on the Future of Transportation is conducting a listening session about autonomous connected vehicles. Connected. On Tuesday, May 29th, from 1 to 3 in the Cape Cod Lounge of the Student Union at UMass Amherst. And so people are very excited that um, faculty are going to be speaking there as part of this, as part of the Governor's Commission. So for all the people who are interested in transportation, which we know is a lot of people in our community, that's a week from tomorrow, from 1 to 3 in the Cape Cod Lounge and at UMass. And the other is that we know that town meeting since 2015 has been declaring Race Amity Day the second Sunday in June. We wondered the other night if we'd already done this early, and we had, so that was great. And I wanted to let people know, again, that the actual celebration will be on Sunday, June 10th, from 2 to 4 at the Unitarian Church Hall. And that it's usually that time. And I believe Mr. Slaughter's going to read the resolution there. I'm so that'll be great. Endeavor to do that. And it looks like Mr. Slaughter's also speaking for on our behalf at the Memorial Day ceremony. So that will be super for those of you watching at home. We assemble, we assemble at 9 o'clock on the common and then go over to War Memorial Pool. So ceremonies would be at about 10 and certainly we'd wrap okay. by 11. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I move we adjourn. Oh, oh no, no. We're, we're oh, no, no. We continue. We go into recess. We're going to recess for now. You we'll see how we adjourn later. Yeah, but thank you all. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. And then do we bond?